Okay. Which tastes better, an apple or an orange? Orange. All right, y'all know the answer. <laughs> All right, personally, I like oranges better, so when I have the choice between an apple and an orange, I would pick the orange. Which brings me to my next question of which is better, an orange or an orange? All of these products are made of about the same ingredients and taste more or less the same, but I would pick the one in the middle, simply orange, because it looks better. And that's why graphic design is so important. It's the difference between what sells and what doesn't. Where all the products are similar, you can't just stand out without looking good because you'll be an orange in a bin of oranges. And that's why trying to do business without advertising is like winking at a girl in the dark because you know exactly what you're doing, but nobody else does. My name is Parker Spradley, and my topic for ISM this year is graphic design. So to learn more about the field of graphic design, I interviewed several professionals, and the first person I interviewed was Mr. Jason Franzen, who is the founder of his own design company, More Simple. More Simple's philosophy is the paradox of more, which means that people need to think more about something to communicate an idea in less words. And I think that this philosophy describes the process of logo design perfectly because you're essentially trying to capture the entire essence of a company in just a symbol. Then I traveled to Dallas to interview Ms. Natalia Vargas, who is my mentor, and she is an art director at Bottle Rocket Studios, which is a company that is focused on mobile application development. And I'll talk more about this in the mentor visit section of my speech, but um, an interesting thing about Bottle Rocket is that the process of app development is streamlined. So the developers and the software developers and the art directors are working together to create their product. My third interview was with Mr. Josh White, who is a graphic designer for NBC Art House, which is a new studio. And the interesting thing about graphic design and broadcast news is that when I watch news, I never really thought about how graphic design is incorporated into it. But we observe it um, subconsciously in the graphics of weather templates, the news logo, and the animations that lead into different segments. My next interview was with Ms. Jennifer Wong, who is the founder of her own company, Jen Wong Designs. And the interesting thing about Ms. Wong is that while her background is in business management rather than graphic design, I wanted to interview her because I looked at her portfolio and I thought it looked interesting and that she was talented, which is how the graphic design industry works. My last interview was with Ms. Melinda Martin, who is a graphic designer for the company Fast Signs. And when I initially asked to interview her, I thought that she would be responsible for designing signs, but actually I learned that it's something different. This company, um, their headquarters is in Carrollton, and they actually manage several stores of Fast Signs, so they have franchisees. And what she does is she does marketing projects to help the franchisees advertise their business. So they're basically overseeing several stores that do design individually, and she does, um, she uses the software in design to design brochures and things for them to help advertise their businesses. So in, additional, in addition to going on interviews, we also do research in ISM to learn more about our topic. And the first thing that I did was the career outlook assessment and then the most interesting thing I found in the career outlook for graphic design is that while it's growing about as fast as the average for most occupations, um, the digital industry is expanding rapidly while the print industry is declining. So that kind of made me shift my focus from graphic design away from print and towards digital because the outlook was so much better. And then the first the first actual research I did was about crowdsourcing and graphic design. Crowdsourcing and graphic design is basically the process of a business soliciting multiple designs from freelance designers and then picking one to represent their business. And the reason that this is bad for designers is that they're basically doing free work and they don't know if they're going to be compensated for the work that they do. 
but it's good for startups who can't afford to pay a large price for to fund a professional advertising campaign. My second research assessment is over the field trip that our ISM class went on to UNT. And then while I was at UNT, I sat in on three different classes, Design One, Studio Art, and Interaction Design. My favorite class I sat in on was Interaction Design because they were doing a class critique when I walked in. And it reminded me a little bit of last year when I was in AP Art, 2D, we would post our work around the room and then go around and critique each other's art. But most of the critiques that I would made would be, um, they wouldn't be constructive feedback or constructive criticism. I'd say things like, I like your painting, but then in this class, all the feedback was pretty much negative, but it was all very constructive. Last year in ISM, since I was doing medicine, all of my research assessments were basically over articles, but then this year, since I was doing graphic design, I thought it would be more applicable if I did actual design projects for my research assessments. So the first one I did was this vintage Colorado logo. The background is a picture that I took in Estes Park, Colorado, and then it's overlaid with a logo that I designed that I think would look good on maybe a sweatshirt. And then I created the speckled effect that you see on many sweatshirts and t-shirts by using a clipping mask in Illustrator, which basically a clipping mask is when you have an image and you overlay it with another image and you subtract the top image from the bottom image. So I put an image of speckles over the logo and then subtracted the speckles from it to create that effect. The second project I did was the ISM logo for Coach Goff. Um, this was pretty straightforward. I just used different shapes. I didn't learn too much new things from this. My third research assessment was a Photoshop project rather than an Illustrator project, and it's about the psychology of color. Basically, the process of doing this was really simple. I just used the color replacement tool in Photoshop to change the color of three uniform green pairs to um, blue, pink, purple, and orange. And the idea behind me doing this is that um, to research the impact that colors can have on an image and how that could help you market your products because certain colors have certain emotional connotations and they can make an image look more interesting. And then this is somewhat related to my original work, which is graphic design variations by industry. Basically, the idea of this original work was for me to pick different industries. I ended up picking medicine, fast food, waste and waste disposal. And um, I researched the logos and other graphic design elements in each of these industries. And I kind of grouped them together. And then I wrote about the trends between them. This is the cover page for my original work. And then this was just kind of helping me to work with print design. Um, I designed this myself. Before I knew what industries I was going to do, I just drew some, made some generic icons in Illustrator, like a dollar sign and a graph and things like that. And then um, this was the first page that I made. It's about the fast food industry. And I put this page in the front because I feel like this is the most noticeable to people because most people have been to Chick-fil-A and McDonald's and Wendy's and Sonic and things like that. And most people already realize that um, a common color trend between these stores is red and yellow. So after I kind of grouped these colors together, then I used those colors to design the colors for the rest of the elements of the page, like the title and the graph. And then after I made the fast food page, um, I wasn't really that familiar with the medical industry or the waste disposal industry or the finance industry. So the way that I figured out about the different companies I was going to use is that I would research the top 10 companies in the industry and then look up their logos and then um, analyze them for trends and group them together. And so medicine is more of a blue. It also has some um, green and brown accents. And then one aspect of my original work that I learned how to do was how to work in different programs in Adobe, like Illustrator and Photoshop, and then just how to transfer those elements into a larger publication like InDesign. 
which Adobe makes it pretty simple. Um, so for the chart, I would make a graph in Illustrator. And then it's easy to just like copy it and drag it into InDesign and just keep it there. The finance industry is um, blue and red, which I was surprised about. I picked finance because I thought it would be green. Um, and then the last one, the waste disposal industry, I knew would be green. It's just trying to think about clean energy. So my mentorship this year is with Ms. Natalia Vargas, who, as I mentioned, is an art director at Bottle Rocket. Um, and then mobile application development, this is a picture of us in front of the app wall. And when I was talking to her about what I wanted to get out of our mentorship, I've had two mentor visits with her so far, she thought it would be a good idea for me for my final product to design an app for a business because that's basically what Bottle Rocket does. And then she said that at the same time that I'm creating and designing this app, I could shadow her and then learn about the process at Bottle Rocket. And then she advised me when I was asking her what kind of business should I pick for designing this app. She said, don't choose anything too well known like Coca-Cola or Mary Kay or anything that would be too big um, or that already has an app. And so I tried to think about like lesser well-known companies. And my dad, he listens to podcasts about startups like This Week in Startups. And he came across a company called Sew Away Makeup, which is a very new company. Um, it was established this year, and it's pretty interesting. It sells makeup um, in just less smaller quantities so that people will be able to finish the makeup. It's at cheaper prices, and then they have a really interesting feature where after you use every like a few products, then you can send back the containers and then recycle them, and then you earn rewards for recycling the products. So I decided that I wanted to design an app for this company. I've learned a lot through my mentorship so far about graphic design, and um, I'm excited about the prospects of the industry. Thank you, everybody, for coming to my presentation.